All right, moving on. In a recent interview, comedian Lunell says that Lee Daniels didn't apologize to Monique until 50 Cent said he was going to work with her. Now, do you think Lee Daniels felt obligated to apologize to Monique because of 50 Cent's comment and the conversation uh, he had with Monique? I mean, with uh, T.S. Madison on her show. What do y'all think about this? Q, what do you think? Um, yeah, there, 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 there's no way around it. Yes. Yes. Um, now, I, I'm not, I, you know, Lee Daniels strikes me as a type of person that is very human. And I'm sure somewhere in his heart, he, you know, probably was missing his friend and probably was feeling like, you know what, this is all. But you, you, Jesus himself would have to come down and tell me that that 50 cent making this a hot button uh, topic along with the conversation with T.S. Madison was not the catalyst for making this happen. Absolutely. Okay. Al, what do you think? Yeah. Yeah. I think I, I think I concur with Funky on this. I, I, I'm i not that familiar with the chronological order because, you know, I haven't been following when the, when he re-engaged her, like when they started back talking. I don't believe it happened that night on the stage though in, in, in Long Island. I really don't think so. I think Lee is way more calculating than that. <clears throat> I think this is might have been the way it rolled out to me. It was a buildup. And, you know, that's what it appeared to me. But you know what? Who cares? I honestly just want Monique back to work. She's been going through a lot. We put her through a lot. I think she's learned a lot of lessons. It's time for her to get back to doing what she does best. And that is being an actor. Um, I think that... Uh... What Lunell's point was trying to she was making was that it was really because of the 50 cent um piece. But I'm I'm about to disagree with my girl a little bit. I think that played a part in it, but I really do think it was T.S. Madison who fostered this because T.S. Madison had both people on her show. She had a conversation with Monique and got Monique to really open up. And it was one, it was a really good interview. I want to say one of Monique's best interviews. Then she went to her friend Lee Daniels and had a conversation with Lee Daniels and really, I think, was the true catalyst to getting this happening. 50 Cent, of course, he's going to go and make a social media post and that's what he does. And it does put pressure. But I think it was really about that one-on-one -on -one conversation. Uh, I think it was like a 45 minute hour conversation that T.S. Madison had with both of them. And I just want to give T.S. Madison her flowers for doing that because she made, made, she made real change in a situation that had been going on for a long time. Most definitely. I, yeah. I, I, totally, I totally agree. We have some comments from the chat. Uh, Bryson Cobb says, I love it here. I love this show. Belinda Howard said, so excited for tonight's show. Kim Bronson said, it's Monique's time to shine. And uh, Ashlyn Mc, uh, MC says, get her back to work. And uh, yeah. yeah, all right, people are feeling it. All right, y'all, Good Morning America's Robin Roberts revealed that she almost turned down an interview with former President Barack Obama in 2012 regarding marriage equality uh, because she feared of being outed. Roberts stated there was a possibility that he would change his stance on marriage equality. I had not been public yet about being gay and I was afraid that I might be outed, that people might wonder why is she the one interviewing the president when she's making, when he's making this change in his stance. Roberts did not open up about her long-term relationship with her girlfriend, Amber Lane, until 2013. Uh, question is here. Has a fear of being outed ever stopped you? Tell your uh, mama stop calling. Uh, <laughs> that ain't nobody but your damn mama. It probably is. Has a fear of being outed ever stopped you from pursuing a career opportunity? I'll be right back. Y'all answer the question. <laughs> let, me, let, let me tell you the thing. First, first, first off, here's the thing. Robert Roberts. Girl, we Robin. Robin, we've been to the immortal piece of hut. That's number one, okay? From the masculine St. John suit you was wearing to the way you walk like Viola Davis in heels, we've been knew you was gay. The people been knew you was gay. That's number one. Number two, though, I, I want I want to say something um, that's very important about and and I, and I said this last week about why I don't hang out around closeted people and DL people because the impact it could have on you. When I became Funky Daniva, when I did the very first video, a very dear friend of mine, somebody whose word I really take for, for to heart, uh, was relatively closeted at the time. And because they felt like me doing that video somehow would have a reflection on him, that person called me and said, what are you doing? You need to take that down. Why are you doing this? You know how bad that looks. That person was giving me advice rooted in their own fear. And had I would have listened, 
You know what I'm saying? I would not be where I am now. And it's the same thing for Robin. That closeted DL fear almost had you miss out on one of the largest interviews of your life, which was career changing. And quiet as it's kept, same thing with that friend, the same thing with Robin Roberts. Girl, we've been knew you was gay. We was just waiting on you to come to the party. Um, when I, in 1991, I was a contestant in the Miss Teen USA pageant in Biloxi, Mississippi, and Robin Roberts was one of the judges. I sat one-on-one. I knew my 17-year-old self saw them big shoulder pads in that suit, in that pantsuit, and she just, the vibe was very, like, I could tell. It just always amazes me when people say, I didn't want to be out and I'm like, girl, you was never in it. (laughs) It's okay, Robin. Al, what do you, I want to know what you think about this. Al, what do you think about this story? I don't know. I got to be honest with both of you. It's kind of hard to listen and hear what you're saying. It makes perfect sense, get me. But I, I've been in that seat, right? <clears throat> so I think it has something to do with your psychological development. And like she said, her fear. Um, she said that, you know, she's from a Christian family. So one thing that she never wanted to do was disappoint her family and being something that was not right. And that made her a person, a bad person. And that resonated with me. And I like the fact that she said that she wasn't going to let fear get in the way of her accomplishing all the things that she wanted to do. And that was the main reason why she decided to move forward with this interview. This has so many layers to me. And I just feel like we can't tell people when and how to deal with their issues, whether it's addiction, sexuality, or whatever. I'm just glad that Robin has been given the opportunity to be on such a huge platform and touch so many people in so many different ways and so many different levels that I really don't care what her sexuality is, to be honest with you. And and that's the part that I wanna I wanna plant my 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 stance on. She's just been an incredible representation of a black female um in the in the news game and the way she's changed the game is just admirable to me and and i'm 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 team robin roberts well i'm not because she gave me a 7.5 in the pageant so i'm still feeling a certain way about that now. <laughs> robin congrats on finally being comfortable with it i'm glad you didn't miss right. out on that all right y'all so well, we had a lot of comments but i'm gonna get to them at least said uh phone ringing i love this show uh nakuro says it's up to the individual to out themselves um, in the street says she's not closeted, she's private. Not all the gays wear their sexuality like you. And uh they call me I like that. having a landline. I know, um, that's some that's dumb BS, but we'll say that for a whole nother show. <laughs> all right, John. No, let's it. talk about it. What you mean? Yeah, we, we gotta go to commercial. Oh, yeah. sorry. It's time. All right, we're gonna take a quick commercial break and we'll be right back with more TGIF. <laughs> 